you're gonna fail. It's okay. Okay? You're gonna fail. And I'm not talking about the tests. It's one thing. I'm talking about to your knees, your skin, bloody, fail. And that's okay, because you know what? You know down deep inside of all of you, that's how you learn. You need to be motivated by failure. How'd you learn how to walk? You, you crawled, then you fell down, busted your tooth, got some blood in your mouth, get up and you walk, right? Self-directed. We try so hard in our lives to fit in. We try to fit into certain groups, certain frats, certain sororities, you know, among certain friends, yet the people we idolize are most are the ones that stand out. But when you're prepared, there is no fear. There is no fear of failure, okay? Because even if you've walked out of something and you feel like you failed at it, your preparation is so strong that you're gonna take that failure and turn it into the outcome you desire. And most people stop at failure. Okay? We've all failed at things. I'm gonna to continue to fail at stuff. Right? It's the most powerful tool you can use. But it all depends on how you use it. In the hands of an individual, it can do unbelievable damage. In the hands of a professional, of a doctor, it saves lives. So it's the same thing with failure. It's how you use it. It's that drive inside of you. Okay, it's what we talk about, the dark side. The dark side is filled with failure, but it's the fuel that burns you like something that's never burned inside you before. And you constantly remind yourself, after every defeat, after every setback, every time you get knocked down, I've got a saying, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. See, a lot of people, because of failure, they stop, they stop believing. Let me share something with you. You will fail your way to success. Yes. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. You will fail your way to success. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. It doesn't matter how many times people tell you that you can't do it. It doesn't matter if you don't have a dime in the bank. You will fail your way to success. You don't make excuses for the failure, you grieve it. You feel the pain. You don't brush it off, you don't downplay it. You feel the pain and you don't rush to feel better. Now, listen, this is a principle of life I'm about to tell you. To get past it, you gotta go through it. That's true in so many areas, but it's particularly true with failure. To get past your failure, that failure in your life, you gotta go through it. You can't go around your failure, you can't go over your failure, you can't go under your failure, you can't ignore your failure. You need to grieve the failure. You need to feel the pain. Now we don't like feeling bad, but grief is a good thing. Grief is the way we get through the failure and grief is the way we learn the lessons. So often, we wanna just, when we fail, we wanna just forget it, push it aside, stuff our emotions, and then immediately go to the next thing. When you stuff your emotions, when you swallow your emotions, your stomach keeps score. It's kind of like, what if you took a can of Coke and you shook it up for a long time and then you put it in the freezer? What's gonna happen to it? It's gonna explode eventually. It's gonna come out sideways. And this happens in your life when you don't deal with your emotions properly. This is why sometimes six months after failure, a marriage falls apart. Or six months after somebody gets laid off work, there's another problem. There's a physical health problem, things like this. Because you've shaken up the can and you've got all these emotions feeling inside of shame and regret and fear and, and, and insecurity and all the things that come with failure and you're not dealing with them. And so you shake it up and you say, we're just gonna put this in the refrigerator, try to forget about it, and we're gonna freeze it. And it's gonna explode and it's gonna come out sideways in an affair or in uh, wrong behavior or an impulsivity or an addiction or all kinds of other things. I have seen this thousands of times in people's lives. You don't minimize it, you don't rush to feel better. To get past your failure, you've gotta go through the failure. How do you create your life? 
you get hungry for something, don't you? You decided there's something you wanted so bad that you unleashed all your desire. You became obsessed with it. If it was a business or a car or a relationship or a transformation in your body, if there's something you once envisioned and now it's real, it's because you didn't just envision it, you brought so much emotion to it that now it's in your life. It was once a dream, it was once a goal, and now it's in your life. I can tell you that most people underestimate what total obsessive laser focused really is and what it looks like because you are way more powerful than you know you are if you went crazy, psycho, obsessed, laser focused on anything, even something you're totally ill prepared for. Humans have an unreal capacity to get great at things, even if they don't have a natural talent for it, if they're immersed in it, and to learn something and acquire a ton of knowledge in a short period of time as well. It takes such a desperate, obsessive focus in order to move people in that way, in order to touch people in that way. You really got to focus with all of your fiber and all of your heart and all of your creativity. You want to make your dream come true, you got to stay focused. Some people rather get even than get ahead. Stay focused on where you want to go. You've got to be willing to stay focused, to be creative, to be relentless, because things are going to happen to you when you're working on your dream. Stuff gets better if we work at it and we stay focused on where we're going. Society is conspiring all the time in our culture to completely distract you so you never win. To just divert your focus and attention. Look over here, look at this shiny thing. Look at this TV show, look at this sports team. Worry about what's going on here in this war. And they get these different things on television and our phones and in our lives to just get us distracted so we never get obsessed, we never get laser focused for an extended period of time. Ask yourself truthfully, your big goals and dreams, are you really clear on what they are? Because if you don't have that, we can't even get started. Can you get laser obsessively focused almost to its exclusivity, almost, but for an extended period of time? Can you honestly say you've done that for an extended period? I'm talking about a year, two years, three years, four years, five years, even a decade towards something you want so badly, you want it like oxygen. It's like you want it like you want to eat. You want it like you want to live, right? Are you extendedly laser focused on it or do you get distracted easily? You may take it for granted now, hopefully not, but it was once just a vision. It may have seemed impossible at one time. So how did you do it? You started with a concrete vision of what you wanted and you focused on it continuously, didn't you? Wherever focus goes, energy flows. You envisioned something, you got clear about it, and then you started thinking about all the reasons why you wanted it. You got excited about it. You said, this is what's next for me now. I want this. You may have dreamed about it, thought about it, talked about it. But when you focus on something continuously, something magical happens. You get insights, don't you? You overhear a conversation and you hear something you wouldn't have heard if you didn't have that outcome or goal that you wanted so badly. What I'm telling you is if you really want something bad enough, it's worth it. It's worth it. So start to feed yourself the worth question over and over and over again, not the cost question. Cost is a distraction. Worth is a focus mechanism. This is so worth it, it's so worth it, it's so worth it. Focuses you. Cost distracts you. So I want to challenge you today to make that shift of eliminating these distractions and elevating your level of focus in your life. What's your state? Are you in a state of focus? Are you pumped up? Are you breathing deeply? Are you lasered in on something? Are you completely in there? Or is your state a distracted, diverted state? What I want to remind you of is on the other side of that suffering, on the other side of that sacrifice, on the other side of that laser focus is your dream.